Hello, and welcome to the Lunchtime Game Review. We review games that you can play at lunch. We look at games that you can pick up and play in 45 minutes or less. Today, we'll be reviewing Chronicle, a trick taking card game for three to six players, designed by Seiji Love Letter Kanai and published by Z Man Games. Some of you might remember Seiji Kanai as the designer from Cheaty Mages from one of our previous episodes. The object of Chronicle is to go down in history for your deeds. To do this, you must impress a stern bearded man who is writing an epic history book, or chronicle, if you will. To impress the stern bearded man, you must play a few rounds of a trick taking card game in order to win these stern bearded man tokens. If you win three stern bearded man tokens, you will have impressed the stern bearded man enough that you will feature prominently in his chronicle and win the game. At the start of each round, the entire deck is dealt out to the players, then a win condition card is chosen at random. This card tells players what they need to do to win, and who gets to start the round. The leading player each turn plays a card from their hand, which has both a coloured suit and a strength value. With the exception of wild cards, the other players must follow suit if possible, or play out of suit cards face down if they can't. Once each player has played a card, the player who played the strongest card takes all of the cards and scores them as allies. This is referred to as a meeting, because nothing says epic historical action like the word meeting. Once a player has emptied their hand, the round is over. Your scored allies, plus any cards left in your hand at the end of the round, determine who gets stern bearded man tokens. The win condition card dealt out at the start of the round tells you which allies you want to score and which allies you want to discard or foist onto other players. When you get dealt your first hand of cards, you're immediately given a lot of information to take in. Each card has its own rules text to digest and analyze, and each value of the card impacts the game in a different way. There's a deceptive amount of planning that goes on. If you're familiar with folk games like Tichu, Sweka, or Briskala, this will feel very familiar to you. And although it may seem overwhelming for new players at first, it's the kind of game that you get the sense you want to master and learn about over time. Now, in terms of player interaction, there are a variety of ways that you can really screw your opponents over. For example, every card with the value of three on it can be used to reverse the value of all cards currently in play. It's very powerful for a meeting. There are also other cards that allow you to steal valuable allies from opponents, and you can use cunning tricks to give evil to your opponents, preventing them from scoring that round. Although, you might want to keep an eye out for where all those evil cards are going, because there's a total of four in the game, and if one player has all of them at the end of the round, then <laughs> they win two stern bearded man tokens instead of one, and... No one else wins any stern bearded man tokens at all! <laughs> this is the part where I'm supposed to tell you how great this feels, to pull this devastating and difficult special move off, to twist the game in just the right way to really shaft your opponents. But sadly, this moment of elation never comes, because your party spirit will be crushed before this ever happens. The thing about Chronicle that makes it so flat is the pacing. It's very slow, especially for new players. I mean, just look at this chump. Trying to work out how to play just one of his cards, the options presented to him are overwhelming. There's the long game, the short game to consider, plus all of the thinking time that he's had between turns has been made irrelevant by the card that somebody just played. He yearns for the simpler days of cheaty mages when the options were just that little bit more manageable. And now, a weird edge case has come up, so this chump has to reach for the rules parchment to try and work out what's going on. In Chronicle, you will spend most of your time either waiting for chumps like this, or... you'll be the chump. The expected playtime on the box says 30 minutes. 30 minutes! That's ambitious! Even if everyone comes into the game uh, wide awake, knowing exactly what they're doing, and playing fast. You'll probably want to play the fast version of the rules to try and get a full game in over lunch. That means playing with two win condition cards instead of just one. It generally speeds things up. 
except you can get combinations of win conditions where everyone is guaranteed a point. So you have to house rule the game. It feels like you need to put a lot of work in to make this a fun lunch game. We've yet to have a game of Chronicle which ends with whoops and cheers, uh, with that feeling of a massive payoff when someone wins that final crucial stern bearded man token. I mean, what even are these things? They've got these little ones on them, even though they're the only denomination of token in the entire game. It's like someone rushed them out in Microsoft Publisher five minutes before the printing deadline. Who'd feel like a winner with the most of these? Have you ever had someone recommend a TV show to you and say that it only gets good after the first five episodes, and when you put the effort in, it is worth it. Chronicle isn't that. It just doesn't grow on you. It presents itself as being something a bit more profound than it actually is, and the facade quickly falls away with repeated plays. If a lunchtime game isn't really grabbing us after this many desperate attempts to have fun with it, we can't really recommend it to our friends, and for a game that's about making your mark on history, Chronicle is ironically a fairly forgettable experience. Finally, if you're a fan of trick-taking card games, you've played better ones. Now, your lunch break is over. You should probably get back to work. Thanks for watching, folks. If you've played this game, please let us know what you think, or if you haven't, let us know how it looks. And of course, if you've got any games that you love to play at lunch that you think we should check out, please let us know in the comments below. Stay tuned for more lunchtime game reviews coming your way soon.